Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to the 2023 Fairfax County Design and Environmental uh, Award Ceremony. My name is Walter Hamilton III, and I have the great honor and privilege for the second consecutive year to be your MC. And uh, it's really a great privilege and honor to be able to serve in this capacity. Well, tonight we have several great local leaders in the areas of environmental, uh, just environmental stewardship and the design associated with that. And, uh, you know, I've been a resident of Fairfax County for some 42 years. Been a lot of places, but this is one of the best places in terms of overall quality of life that I can say that I'm very proud to be a part of. And it wouldn't be possible if it were not for people who have environmental stewardship, who are preservationists and conservationists of the environment, uh, which we enjoy. I think we all can agree that it's a pleasure to have clean air, clean water, uh, forest resources, open spaces that add to our quality of life. Not only just for us as human beings, but we share this planet with our animal resources as well. And so we don't take it lightly to be able to honor these award recipients tonight. And uh, we're very grateful that we have uh, many of our elected leaders here to cheer you on and to congratulate you in that regard. And so uh, it's my great honor and pleasure to bring to the podium first our chairman of the Board of Fairfax County Supervisors, that's Jeffrey McKay. And uh, as Chairman McKay is coming, I want him to know that in front of this throng of people, Chairman McKay, I'm proud to say you are both my chairman and my supervisor. Remember last year you told me to remember that? Yes, I did. Well, I'm telling you, I'm proud to say that that's the case. So with that, let's welcome Chairman Jeffrey McCall. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Walter. And because I was a district supervisor, it used to always uh, drive me crazy when former uh, Chairman Connolly and Chairman Bulova would come into my district and remind everybody that they had two supervisors, the chairman and the district supervisor. And now I'm enjoying being able to say that, and it is working. So if you don't like what your district supervisor tells you, you can come to me. Uh, but, but in all seriousness, it is uh, great to be here uh, with all of you. This is one of the fun events. Uh, we get to do and to celebrate uh, with each of you your achievements in environmental excellence, uh, achievements for tree awards and design awards, uh, Jim Scott design awards. Um, you know, we, we sometimes can take for granted uh, the beauty and the dignity of our natural uh, environment uh, in Fairfax. And we are blessed that so many people work every single day to do the right thing environmentally uh, in this county. And earlier today, we had an environmental committee meeting, and we were reminded of a simple uh, thing that we must constantly remind our public, that we make major investments in environmental stewardship in the county, and we do it at the top levels of government because we know we're in a race to save our climate. And one of the statistics that came out of that, we've, we've known this for a while, but was reiterated at this environmental committee, is consider because of the work that you all have done, that the Board of Supervisors have done, and so many other people in our community who are not here in the auditorium, uh, we can proudly say that we have reduced greenhouse gas emissions in Fairfax County by 30% since 2005. Think about that. And we can say that at a time where we had 12% growth 
in the county over that period of time as well, which puts it into a little bit different perspective for all of us. So the work that we're doing actually matters. Um, the last thing I want to say, because I was says on my script, two minutes max, um, but I think it's important, you know, some of our, our young people in schools are recognized in here, and as, as a parent of a high school kid and an upcoming middle school kid, you know, I can tell you, when you go and talk to our young people, um, they get this stuff. They get it, they understand they're in a race to save their planet. Uh, for their co-students and for future generations. And what you all are doing by setting a standard is reassuring them that the adults get this too. And we're trying as desperately as they are to do the right thing for our planet, but we know that future generations literally rely on the work that we're doing today to, to exist. And so I think we can't forget that, that this is not just a simple award ceremony, but this is a celebration of a way of life, a thought process, and, and really uh, the DNA of the people here who are getting uh, the award. And so I am going to, before I pass uh, the mic to uh, Supervisor uh, Walkinshaw, who is our uh, environmental committee chair, uh, new environmental committee chair, I also want to acknowledge Supervisor Kathy Smith from Sully District is here. Um, Supervisor uh, Stork, who has been the past environmental chair, did a great job with the board's environmental committee from Mount Vernon District. And uh, Supervisor Palchik from the Providence District is here as well. And with that, I am going to turn uh, the podium over to our current legislative and uh, environmental committee chair, Supervisor James Walkinshaw from the Braddock District. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you, Chairman McKay. It's an honor to be here with you all. And in, in advance, congratulations to all the winners. And I think the work that you all have done and will continue to do is the most important work we're doing in Fairfax County. And when we think about these concepts of environmental design and sustainable living, I think it's actually the fundamental challenge of our time. How do we develop a sustainable relationship between our planet, our natural resources, and humankind? And for hundreds of years of human history, uh, we've gotten that wrong, right? We burn fossil fuels with abandon. We built roads and highways and buildings in ways that we shouldn't have. And now our challenge is how do we undo all that and correct it and do it in a sustainable way? And reading through the winners of tonight's awards, I can see that you all are doing that work. And it's so important to help us meet our goals the very aggressive goals that our board has set to address climate change and environmental issues. We have an aggressive goal to be a carbon neutral county by 2050, and we're on track to do that, but we're gonna need your help to continue. We have an aggressive goal to expand our tree canopy and make our streams even cleaner than they are. And it doesn't happen just with the county government doing it. It's gonna require everyone in the community to make it happen. And, you know, I was reading a little bit about environmental design and the history of environmental design. And those of you engaged in that work are part of a great lineage. Uh, the ancient Greeks figured out that they needed to build their homes facing the sun so they can be heated by the sun and didn't have to burn so much fuel to heat their homes. The Romans developed glass so they could have windows and light could come into their homes so they could heat their homes without burning so much fuel. And throughout human history, we've been innovating to build a more sustainable community, a more sustainable planet. And the work that you all are doing is a continuation of that. So thank you for what you're doing. Congratulations to all the winners tonight. And now I, I think my job is to introduce uh, representative from Congressman Connolly's office, somebody I know a little bit, uh, Maddie White. Give it up for Maddie. Just a little shorter than both of them. Okay, um, I'll be super brief because I want to hear about all the great people who have won awards. Uh, unfortunately, Congressman Connolly isn't able to be here, but Jerry wanted to make sure that we appropriately recognized all of the awardees here today. So we have included all of the winners into the congressional record just to commemorate all the work that has been done um, in these three categories. So thank you for your commitment to our environment and to sustainable design. Uh, looking forward to hearing more about all the awardees tonight. Thank you so much. I also want to give any other 
Board of Supervisors members an opportunity? They say no. Okay, so we will uh, move forward. I do have uh, some instructions for the award recipients. And uh, when you hear your name, would you, if you may, access the center aisle, come on down. Uh, we will have someone to greet you and hand you your award. You will give you an opportunity to take individual photographs. But we also want you to stay in this general area because when we complete your award category, we want to take a large group photo. And uh, tonight we have three award categories and we have subcategories within these three awards. So, uh, so we'll make it clear. We'll call your name. We'll have you come down. You receive your reward, take your photos, and uh, we'll proceed in that manner. Okay, so the first award category will be the Environmental Excellence Award. Each year, the Environmental Quality Advisory Council, we call them EQAC, on behalf of the Board of Supervisors, selects recipients for the Environmental Excellence Awards. The award recognizes individuals, organizations, businesses, and county employees who advance or support the county's environmental goals and policies, dedicate personal time and expertise beyond their normal fiscal and civic responsibilities, and demonstrate leadership within the community. This year, the Fairfax County Environmental Quality Advisory Council is issuing six awards to county residents, organizations, businesses, and employees. The individual awardees have, been, have demonstrated extraordinary leadership within the community and exceptional dedication to the preservation and enhancement of the county's natural resources. Larry Zaragoza go, uh, is here tonight with EQAC, he's the chair, and he will present the awards to the award recipients and so at this time, I would like to acknowledge uh, EQAC's efforts. And I would like to ask that all members of the EQAC uh, committee, if you would stand so that we might recognize you and uh, appreciate the work that you do. Any members of EQAC here? <laughs> okay, well, it looks like Chairman Zaragoza is a solo. <laughs> All right, so within the uh, Environmental Excellence Awards, we have individual categories. And uh, I might add that two of the awards recipients I'm familiar with. But this first we'll start is, is May Torrey. And uh, May is a senior at Langley High School and environmental advocate promotes and actively seeks opportunities to increase awareness of and act on local sustainability issues. She has been, with, been the club elected president of Saxon's Go Green, a school affiliated environmental club at Langley High School and has organized fundraisers and collaborated with Clean Fairfax to design reusable bags. These bags were then distributed to local grocery stores, retailers, and low-income areas throughout the county to reduce plastic waste. Thank you, Ms. Tory. Is she here? Okay, she's not here. Okay, but yes. Let's... All right. Okay, so now we transition to the County Employee Award category. And uh, this first awardee used to be my supervisor. And so uh, I know what a great guy he is. His name is Craig Carency. And Craig, as a recently retired director of public works and environmental services, the stormwater planning division, Craig has provided excellence in leadership through the monitoring and improvement of stream health. During his tenure as director, Fairfax County restored over 100,000 linear feet of streams, facilitated by his open-minded leadership and business acumen. He encouraged his team to advance initiatives and collaborate with partners 
to achieve cost savings. Thank you so much, Mr. Carenzi. All right. Our next county award goes to Joseph Gorney. Joseph Gorney, Principal Environmental Planner with the Department of Planning and Development. The Environmental Policy and Plan Development Branch works collaboratively with other county agencies on a diverse range of environmental review topics, working to create a sustainable future for residents and employees. He was the staff lead for the environmental plan guidance update for the rest and planning study. And he also is responsible for designating Reston as a biophilic community. So thank you very much, Joe Gorney. Now, this, this next recipient is very much a friend of mine. Can I have a little fun? I, because when I introduced this guy, I, I got to say it this way. You. Can you say that with me? You. Hugh Whitehead. Hugh Whitehead is a recently retired urban forester with the Urban Forest Management Division. And Hugh initiated a tree planting program in partnership with Fairfax County Public Schools. Since 2016, a total of 494 trees have been planted at 21 different K through 12 schools, including seven Title I schools. This program not only supports the board's sustainability initiatives, reforestation goals and recommendations from the Joint Environmental Task Force, but fosters educational opportunities throughout the county. Thank you, Mr. Whitehead. <laughs> okay. All right. Still in the Environmental Excellence Award category, we're going to move on to the Organization and Business category. And uh, this year we have Trace, the Zero Waste Store in Vienna. While Trace, the Zero Waste Store, provides products to reduce plastic waste, the store's owner, Mala Parsad, goes above and beyond to educate residents through the Trace Zero Waste Stores website and community events. There is always a good turnout whenever Ms. Persaud co-hosts co a recycling Ask Me Anything event with the Fairfax County Solid Waste Division. Thank you so much, Ms. Persaud. All right. So next we have the Montebello Condominium Unit Owners Association Grounds Committee. It's a mouthful. This 14-member committee researches and recommends actions to preserve, maintain, and enhance the grounds of the Montebello Condominium community. Members put in many hours each year to develop and advocate for projects, identify, and address threats to the grounds, introduce new approaches, undertake citizen science projects, host resident engagement programs, communicate through newsletters and materials, and much more. Their impact benefits the residents, the neighborhoods, and the county. Please join me in applauding the collective efforts and accomplishments of these environmental champions. And, and now we have a chance for a group photo. So, so if you all would come back, and uh, we're going to ask if the members of the board would join us for this group photo. Thank you so much.
Outstanding. So now we're going to move to our second category, and uh, it's called the Friends of Trees Award. 2024 begins the 51st year of service by the Tree Commission. One of its most important community outreach actions is offering Friends of Trees Awards. Our 2023 Winners showed exceptional, outstanding, and innovative conservation-based actions, meeting one or more important goals to protect and preserve existing trees and associated habitats, to increase our tree canopy and related habitats, and or to educate and inspire people to plant more trees and properly maintain them. In all cases, the project must recognize both the value and benefits of trees and use natural landscaping principles based on regionally appropriate native species. The commission chair, Cindy Spies, will present the award recipients with their certificates. Is Cindy here? Yes. All right, well, if there are any other members of the Tree Commission who are present. Would you stand, wave your hand so we might recognize you? Let's give them an outstanding. Okay, so we're gonna follow the same procedure that we did for the Environmental Excellence Awards. I will call the name of each recipient one by one. You come down, take an individual picture, and then after uh, the category is complete. We'll let you know that. We'll take a group uh, photo with the Board of Supervisors members and uh, Ms. Maddie with uh, Congressman Connolly's office. Okay, so the first uh, subcategory in this um, Friends of the Tree Awards is the individual awards. And so our first 2023 individual recipient is Steve Lagerfeld. Steve is a board member of the McLean Trees Foundation and head of its Tree Champions Project. The Tree Champions Program recruits local McLean residents to purchase and plant low cost canopy trees in their yards. Steve visits the residents to advise on tree selection and siting, hiring a planting crew, and administers the logistics of payment, plant delivery, and putting the trees in the ground. In 2022-2023, he planted 72 trees. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's worthy of a claim. And because of that, he was assisted by a major grant award. Steve educates every homeowner about tree species, best practices of planting and maintenance, the value of native plants, and critical invasive vine identification. The idea is simple. Make it easy and inexpensive for people to do the right thing, to help rebuild McLean's diminishing tree canopy. Steve is also a founding member of the Urban Forest Alliance in Franklin Park, 
where he is focused on clearing a large parcel along Old Dominion Drive of invasives and restoring it with native trees and plants. Steve Lagerfeld is a perfect example of how just one individual's action can make a big difference in our urban forest. Let's give Steve another round of applause. Okay, the next individual recipient is Jim McGlone. Jim retired in June 2023 from the Fair, um, excuse me, the Virginia Department of Forestry after serving Fairfax County for almost two decades. Jim was a founder of the Fairfax chapter of Virginia Master Naturalists, where he served as its advisor and trained more than 550 members to identify, protect, and manage trees and other natural resources in the county. Jim is a sought after speaker on threats to our trees and associated habitats. Recent examples include a Northern Virginia Soil and Water Conservation District's Green Breakfast on Climate and Pest Tree Stressors, a Friend of Green Spring Gardens Eco Savvy Symposium on Restoring Our Urban Forests One Yard at a Time, and a Virginia Extension Presentation on Oak Decline in the County. Among other tree conservation based actions, he served as the Virginia Department of Forestry's appointed member to the Fairfax County Tree Commission, including 10 years as the vice chair, helping to write the tree action plan and the popular tree basics booklet. As a board member of Relief Fairfax, he helped establish and maintain its successful free tree seedling giveaway. In sum, Jim McGlone has made exceptional contributions over a long and productive career to promote the maintenance, preservation, and expansion of our urban forests. Once again, Jim McGlone, thank you. Okay. Uh, last but certainly not least in our individual award category is Bob Vickers. Bob served on the Tree Commission for 16 years as a Drainsville District Representative and as Chair for five years, retiring in June 2023. He was instrumental in crafting the original 2008 Tree Action Plan and its 2019 successor. In 2022, Bob inspired the Great Falls Citizens Association to survey mature trees along Georgetown Pike to increase VDOT's awareness of developer encroachment on the trees in its right of way. Additionally, Bob has nominated more than 100 trees to Virginia Tech's Big Tree Registry. This includes more than two dozen state champions, 21 of which are in Fairfax County. Recently, he trained Fairfax tree stewards on how to measure big trees, helping expand its efforts to all parts of the county. To educate the public about trees, he asked the county park authority to help make trees cookies out of a park tree down during a storm. A cookie is a slice of a tree trunk, which tells its story through the number and dimensions of tree rings. These are displayed at several county buildings, including the nearby Herity Building. Bob inspired another educational project at Riverbend Park, where staff and residents developed a mile-long trail identifying 20 different tree varieties. Bob is the perfect example of how to educate both developers and residents on the priceless value of trees. Thank you so much, Bob, for your contribution. All right. Okay. And we have one more category in the Friends of Trees Awards, and it's in the nonprofit group category. One nonprofit citizens group has won an award this year the McLean Citizens Association and its Environment, Park, and Recreation Committee. Fifty years ago, Virginia designated Georgetown Pike 
as the state's first scenic byway to preserve the beauty of this historic road. McLean residents repeatedly expressed concern over the loss of trees along the pike, prompting MCA to look at a survey project begun by the Great Falls Citizens Association the previous year. The survey was to alert VDOT and any new housing developments that might threaten these mature big trees on the pike, but the survey stopped at the boundary with McLean. MCA's Environment, Parks and Recreation Committee, led by then Chair Barbara Ryan, picked up the project. Using the same database and methodology, the committee worked along 3.5 miles of the pike from west of Centrillion Road to Climajandri Park. I don't think I pronounced that correct, but please forgive me. The team recorded 145 trees with a circumference of at least 36 inches, inches all located within the VDOT right of way. In April 2023, the McLean data was merged with the Great Falls data and the complete Georgetown Pike inventory was shared with VDOT. This shows how a small but committed group of county residents can impact a large state agency by gathering feet on the ground information about trees. We hope Georgetown Pike remains forested and beautiful for another 50 years or more. And I want to say thank you all to the McLean Citizens Association and its Environmental Parks and Recreation Committee. All right. Okay. So we have uh, one other group to uh, award in this Friends of Trees Awards, and it goes to the Inova Health Systems Office of St Sustainability for its award in the nonprofit business category. The sustainability team works across the Inova system to establish policies and programs to support environmental and public health. One focus of its mission is building a strong human connection to nature, and it has implemented tree giveaways to Inova staff since 2010. In the past few years, using native seedlings from Fairfax Relief, they have given away 300 to 500 trees a year, depending on available stock. In 2022-2023, they doubled their program from one spring Earth Day event to include a fall thank you to staff event, greatly increasing the number of trees they were able to give away. The Inova Center for Personalized Health and the Inova Shar Cancer Institute are situated on a large campus next to 100 acres of forested land with a one mile trail open to staff and visitors. To continue connecting public health and well being with nature, the Office of Sustainability is identifying native species of trees and shrubs along the trail to install labels to educate visitors. Director Chip Goyette notes that connecting ourselves to our natural environment has countless benefits, and we want to place identifying plaques along the trail so we can all more intimately connect with the nature around us as we walk the path. Pairing human well-being with planting and preserving trees is not only a great public health goal, but also a winning combination for this reward. So we want to say thank you so much for this wonderful action. Okay. okay. So we also have uh, some Fairfax County Public Schools Awards that we want to uh, recognize. The first goes to the Fair Hill Elementary School, located at 3001 Chichester Lane in Fairfax, and they finished a four-phase planting of 32 trees. Principal Ted Cooper and the Fair Hill PTA organize a community garden day in the Fairfield PTA uh, 
each spring and fall uh, to maintain school grounds and plant trees. The trees in the school's plan contribute to shade for the parking lot and playground, provide benefits for wildlife and pollinators, and mitigate stormwater runoff. Post-planning maintenance plans include irrigation, pruning, mulching, and protection from deer. Let's give them a round of applause. The next group is the Liberty Middle School, and it's located at 6801 Union Mill Road. And uh, this group has implemented three phases of six, consisting of 50 total trees planted in 2023. Principal Adam Ebrecht and teachers Michelle Nofall, Donna Stebner, and Julie White have worked to coordinate student participation. And one of the planting phases, Liberty Middle School, also hosted Fairfax County's Arbor Day celebration, featuring inspirational words from county leaders, school board members, and tree commissioners. Students contributed songs and poems and planted eight trees on that day alone. At both schools, the planting events are incorporated into the school's initiatives and curriculum to maximize learning opportunities for students. Special thanks to the adults at each school for modeling this commitment to the importance of tree stewardship. If we teach young people how to be friends of trees now, they will be tr tree friends forever. <laughs> now. Okay. And we have another uh, category that's called development. And uh, this year we are delighted to announce that after several years of not having winners in this category, the Kaiser Foundation Health Plan of the Mid-Atlantic States this year wins a Tree Friends of Tree Award for its new Springfield facility. Notable members of this development team include engineer Michael Benton, landscape architect Nick Letary, and project arborist Nelson Kirchner, all from Vica, Virginia, LLC. General contractors Hensel Phelps and Colleen O'Sullivan, and landscape contractor Jeremy Hall from Chapel Valley. The Kaiser Springfield site wins for its extensive use of natural landscaping and for exceeding the 10-year tree canopy requirements by 9,275 square feet. The site plan is richly landscaped with trees, shrubs, grasses, and perennials that are almost entirely native to Northern Virginia. One goal of the project was to help the region meet its stormwater goals to protect the local streams and the Chesapeake Bay and the planting beds decrease the amount of runoff from impervious surfaces. Design considerations included using a variety of native plant species to provide four season interests, using low maintenance plants that will not require long-term watering, and choosing species that will grow to the appropriate size for, lo for their locations so that important sight lines remain open and safe. This is a prime example of choosing the right trees and understory plants, putting them in the right place, establishing a low maintenance and safe design, and focusing on the ecological and stormwater benefits of native trees and plants. This project went above and beyond county landscaping requirements and can and should serve as a model for other redevelopment efforts in the county. Let's give a Hand, round of applause for all of our winners. Hallelujah. And, and so now we've come to the place where we can have a group photo. Uh, we got a lot of award recipients and we're going to call back our illustrious Board of Supervisors members to be a part of the photo along with uh, Maddie White, with Congressman Connolly's office.
Okay, well we've come to the place where we are at our last award category and uh, it's entitled the James M. Scott Exceptional Design Awards. So established in 1984, the Exceptional Design Awards recognize achievement in the total design of a building and its site. The awards aim to raise awareness of outstanding planning and design projects among design professionals and the general public. The program is sponsored by the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors and administered by the county's Department of Planning and Development in cooperation with the County Architectural Review Board and the Northern Virginia Chapter of the American Institute of Architects. John Burns, the design jury chairman and a member of the County Architectural Review Board is here tonight to present the recipients with their certificates. If there are any other members of the Architectural Review Board, the American Institute of Architects and design jury members, if you're present, would you stand, and raise your hand so we can recognize. All right, excellent. Okay, so in this awards category, there are three subcategories. There's an honorable mention, there's a merit, and then there's an honor award. And so we're gonna start first with the honorable mention awardee. And uh, it's 1800 Tyson's Amenity. Now, I understand that there's no representative here tonight unless I'm mistaken. Okay, I'm right. So, but we're still gonna acknowledge them. Their project creatively repurposed a former restaurant space to encourage employees to come back to the office by providing a variety of spaces and activities for workers to enjoy without leaving the building. The jury commented that the design provides warm, inviting, and stress-free spaces and noted the concept of dedicating an entire floor to social opportunities and mental health should be celebrated and encouraged. And so the recipient is WDG Inter Interior Architecture and the owner is Lerner Enterprises. Let's give them a round of applause. Okay, so our second recipient is the Lorton Community Center and Library. They're coming. This project adds a community center to an existing library, retaining but enlarging the library and taking inspiration from its massing and forms to create a unified design that seamlessly integrates the original library with the new addition. The jury found that the result is a fresh, bright, and fun interior with amenities for all ages, from quiet study rooms to crafts to playing basketball. The jury also complimented the new trails that encourage walking by linking to the adjacent residential neighborhoods. So congratulations to Grimm and Parker Architects and to the Fairfax County Department of Public Works and Environmental Services. The next awardee is the Crossroads Building at the Langley School. This new classroom building completes the campus quad with similar materials to the older buildings and compatible scale with them, but clearly modern in its massing and fenestration. The sloped roofs facing the quad match the roof forms of the adjacent middle and lower schools, but when seen from the athletic field on the opposite side, the roofs are bold half gables with large clerestories flooding the library and central circulation spaces with natural light. The classrooms are nestled between the two 
clerestories with the large windows facing the athletic field. From a site and landscape perspective, the framing and creation of a courtyard is the biggest and most successful move. The jury felt that the overall flow and function of the design is very successful in integrating with the campus master plan on the quad side and taking full advantage of the light available from the open space on the opposite side. Congratulations to CGS Architects and the Lang Langley School. Very good. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the Merit Award categories. And uh, this year, uh, we have two awardees. The first will be going to Spring Mill House. And I understand that we may not have representation from them as well. But we're going to go ahead and acknowledge them. The design takes advantage of the topography of the site, which rises from the street, then slopes down to a pond at the rear of the site, allowing a large portion of the structure to be set into the hillside, minimizing the visual presence from the street. The overall miss, missing of the house, or massing, excuse me, of the house is a series of rectangular pavilions of different sizes and proportions reflecting their interior functions. The narrow end of three of the pavilions are visible from the street, but they are modest in scale and the hyphens that link them are transparent, providing views through the distant landscape. The largest pavilions are the volleyball, half basketball court, and the lap pool, both of which are set deep into the hillside but open out to the backyard. The main living, dining, and entertainment spaces have expansive windows with open views to the surrounding landscape. The jury noted that the juxtaposition of the different sized pavilions the careful integration of the landscape features and the variety of materials that tie them together create an elegant and graceful design. Congratulations to Robert M. Gurney, FAIA architect. Is he here? No, but we're going to. Okay. And so our second award in the merit category goes to the residents at Colvin Run. The jury immediately noticed that what sets this project apart is that the thoughtful and well-integrated features of the design convey the feeling of a resort rather than a senior living facility by creating a non-institutional, comfortable and familiar sense of home. The mass of the building is broken up into residential scaled units in a modern cottage style, creating a welcoming, friendly design inviting to the residents. The spaces to gather and interact are layered from outdoor trails and seating areas to sheltered patios to interior spaces of various sizes. The use of natural materials and consistent detailing carries the warmth of the exterior into the interior spaces. Congratulations to Architecture Incorporated and to the owner, Verity Commercial LLC. And so our final award category is the Honor Award and this is the highest award given in this program by the design jury. And we have two recipients. The first uh, is G and G House. And once again, I've been told that we may not have representation from this group. But the jury was impressed with every aspect of this project, noting that every detail down to the mailbox is thoughtful, consistent, and well executed. The lot is in a prime location overlooking Lake Barcroft, but had remained unbuilt because it is so steeply sloped. The design takes advantage of the slope by stepping down from the street 
toward the lake below so that its street facade matches the massing of adjacent homes. The design was successful in shaping itself into the site and landscape, including environmental sensitivity. Its full height is only visible from the lake, but it features vertical and horizontal setbacks to break up its mass. Mature trees were retained to both help frame views from within the house and to help the house nestle into the surrounding landscape. The sequence of spaces in the house are oriented to frame beautiful views of the lake. One jury, juror described the house as a jewel box purchased on the edge of a cliff. I like that. So congratulations to Robert M. Gurney, FAIA architect. Let's give him a round of applause. And so our second and our last award in this honor category goes to Capital One Hall. The jury found that this project is to be an exceptional urban design with a complex program that makes it both a place-making destination and a catalyst for future development. Every portion of the building is usable, including the roof. The various program elements are deftly integrated into a tight footprint with consistent detailing that flows from the exterior to the interior. Sustainable energy measures are integral to the design. The pleated facade design is particularly commendable in response to solar exposure mitigation and provides a strong visual identity to the building. This project have achieved LEED, that's L-E-E-D, gold certification. One juror called it a world-class building with superbly executed detailing and materials. Another predicted it will be the center of attention for years to come. So congratulations to HGA and to the owner, Capital One. Let's give them a round of applause. Okay. So... Now we have an opportunity, the last opportunity, for uh, us to have a group picture with our Board of Supervisors members. So if you all would come and do that, we appreciate you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that completes the James M. Scott Exceptional Awards, and it also uh, completes the awards program for this year. I would be remiss not to thank and to acknowledge the wonderful staff that made this awards program such a success. Um, I, I do want to call out a couple people. I'll probably embarrass them. But I want to say to uh, Marsha Collins, she's the one who wrote the script. So when I stumbled, that wasn't her fault. That was my fault. So Marsha, thank you so much for making my job so, uh, so pleasurable. I also want to take the opportunity to thank the Fairfax County uh, Channel 16 cable crew. Uh, they did an excellent, outstanding job. And all the staff, all the staff that made this uh, a very successful program. Thank you so much to our Board of Supervisors members. And thank you, audience, for being such welcoming and encouraging um, people who love the environment. And then last but certainly not least, to the awards recipients, we say thank you. 
We salute you and we commend you for doing a wonderful job to enlighten and to give us a quality of life that, in my opinion, is like none other, particularly in this Northern Virginia, Washington, D.C. area. So with that, we're going to say good night. And uh, for those of you who are still here, we have some refreshments uh, in the uh, area to my right. And uh, feel free to make yourselves uh, available to the refreshments that the staff prepared. But once again, I want to say thank you so much, and uh, may God bless you. Good night.